idea here. Let's assume somebody had good vessels. Everything is all right, doesn't have high blood pressure, but he has some cholesterol in the body. Mm. It wouldn't cause a problem, would it? Well, um, as I said, the, of course, the plaques building up is multifactorial. So blood pressure is just one factor. Many things can lead to the damage on the vessel. So hypertension is one, but it's a very major cause of it. So having a lot of cholesterol is also another risk factor. And of course, having a smoking, smoking also damages the lining. So plaques building up, of course, that's another topic, but hypertension is a major contributing factor to those plaques. But the plaques build up from multiple um, reasons, but hypertension is a major one. Since there are usually no symptoms, can you give us an idea of how much damage can actually be done before symptoms begin to show up? Because I'm sure that some complications will bring up symptoms if the high blood pressure itself yeah. does not bring up the symptoms. So about how long does a person have? Yeah. You know, because well, people okay. always think they have a lot of time. Yes. Well, now that question, well, there is no fixed answer. Everybody's different. Why I'm saying so? Because people have different degrees of hypertension. So if your hypertension is quite mild, it may take a longer time, maybe 15, 20, 30 years for compensation. But if it's quite severe, imagine you have a blood pressure of 180 over 120 or 200. Of course, that complications may set in in two or three years you know so there is actually no fix answer but in general we're trying to say a lot of times within five years you begin to see symptoms uh, generally just given an, an average um, of consistent hypertension. hypertension exactly but it's quite it's highly variable it depends on many factors the, the degree of the high blood pressure the, the higher the blood pressure the faster the complications will mm -hmm. set in but there's usually some degree of time a lag time which is where why it's getting them early is very important and a lot of people unfortunately we, we get to know their high blood pressure when complications are setting when they have their first stroke their first heart attack or when the kidney starts packing up very unfortunately very unfortunately we, we, we but if that person were to check check the blood pressure regularly mm -hmm. they could stop that yes right? yes in fact we advocate everybody you know, should check, try and check their blood pressure at least once a year. Even if you're a healthy person, you have no problems. With this kind of trouble, once a year <laughs> is even a long no, time. No, just to as, as a minimum. I think this is mm. for any, anybody. I mean, I'm, I'm saying everybody. Of course, if you have a higher risk, maybe your parents are hypertensive or you have high cholesterol, you're diabetic, you have higher risk of having hypertension, then you should check it obviously more often. Well, um, that once a year is like a general blanket, at least at the very, very minimum. If your risk is higher, you should check it more often. If you're hypertensive already, obviously you should check it much, much more, more often. Exactly. Okay. Please clear this up. And then once you check it, you can pre potentially prevent these complications because you can now keep the blood pressure controlled and those complications may not occur. Okay, we'll come to those, uh, to the keeping in check thing. But I want to know quickly, since it does affect the brain, mm -hmm. blood vessels burst, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes in there, does it affect cognitive ability? Yes, it can. Um, okay. Because, you know, the, the apart from... Because yeah, the brain has many vessels, you know, and with time, when you have, um, first of all, you can even have very small, small blockages in the small vessels of, of the brain. And, you know, just a blockage of one of them may not cause a problem, may not even cause a major stroke, person may not even be aware. But over time, by the time you, start, you have diffuse injury to different parts of the brain, then it begins to affect um, 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 brain function. So the person... Right. Into be memory, exact as forgetting things, and all that. Of course, it's, we call that dementia. And then, they, is it possible that the person will and then the, stop understanding people? Yes, that can happen. The person may become unaware. I mean, familiar and start part, he goes out and then he doesn't find his way home, and he starts having problems with counting money, with managing his finances, with doing things he normally does, ordinary um, activities of daily living. And you call that dementia? It's a form of dementia. Dementia has many causes, but so you don't have to be days, old to be to have dementia. Well, um, the, the, it typically comes as you got, get older, but obviously if you have hypertension, you have something we call vascular dementia, dementia due to blood vessels. And if you, your hypertension is quite severe, it could come even at an earlier age than expected. But usually not in a young person, it will take a bit of time, perhaps in late middle age and all that. So we call that pre-senile dementia when it even comes before okay. age 80, before so age. coming in your 60s and early 60s, you can, people can even have an, a relatively early form of dementia. Now, doctors have advised lifestyle changes yes. as a major way of controlling high blood pressure. Let's remind ourselves of some of these lifestyle changes, things that we can do ourselves to help keep it in check. Okay. Um, so these lifestyle changes are, are very important. Um, and they include, one, your diet. Um, it's advocated that we should put a check on the amount of salt we take 
you know, each day and is advocated perhaps to take um, the WHO, the World Health Organization, recommends less than two grams of sodium in a day. But how to get that practically is one level teaspoon, a level teaspoon of salt. For the whole for day? For the whole day. That that's, is difficult to measure with our soups and stews. <laughs> yes, so that's the one that you, you, know, you put in all your meals and all that. That is what we call a low salt diet. It's quite important for people who are already hypertensive to already, you know, help them help the drugs to work better. Those who have mild hypertension, that in, uh, um, just lifestyle changes may even be enough to control their blood pressure. So, so basically, it's avoiding excessive salt intake. One is also be active, you know, to avoid a sedentary lifestyle, to do exercise. It's advocated that exercise of about 30 minutes, at least five times a week, ca can significantly help to, you know, reduce your blood pressure to some degree. Um, of course, to avoid um, excessive alcohol intake, and um, and you know, so this um, also help. And generally, also another important thing is also in regards to diet, also to increase your fruits and vegetables, because then um, these have a good source of, of potassium, and potassium also helps to counteract the effect of sodium. Sodium helps tends to raise blood pressure. Potassium tends to counteract the effect of sodium. Okay. So increasing your fruits and vegetables also is quite useful. And then being very active if you're, if you're overweight to try and lose, cut down your weight. All this cumulatively help to reduce the blood pressure to a certain degree. Some have said sugar, cutting sugar would help. Well, well that, that helps in cardiovascular health in general, but perhaps not directly for blood pressure, but it's generally advised, even if, you know, for cardiovascular health, it's good to... Well, to not to take excessive amounts, and but more importantly, if you're diabetic, to avoid refined sugars. But for generally, to limit, I mean, it's a recommended that the WHO also recommends we shouldn't refine sugar shouldn't form more than 10% of our calorie in, in intake. Day, intake. So that is for a general recommendation for everybody. So, but that's good for cardiovascular health in general. Mm -hmm. is, okay. Okay. So, how do you determine? You know, when you get a patient, how do you determine that for this person, dietary changes would help or for another person he has to take medication okay. or is it a let's wait and see basis okay well what we do is um once the hypertension is, is confirmed it now depends on the degree of the hypertension if it's a mild form in which the, the blood pressure is not um very um high um we or first of all, everybody, we start with lifestyle. Nice we advocate lifestyle for everybody. And for those who have very mild form of hypertension, just lifestyle may be enough to control um, the blood okay, pressure. Okay, well, let's take that up after the break. We really need to go on right. a break now. Let's go on a short break. When we come back, we get your input. Stay with us.